All right, guys, welcome back to episode four now. Is it four? Yes, episode four <laughs> of um, our little podcast here. Um, I guess we'll just get right to it. I have yeah. <laughs> not much to say. Uh, as always, ladies first. We'll start off with a um, uh, post from r slash ask woman that you picked up. So yeah. go for it. Uh, it's from you slash Kate the Goose. Um, what are small changes you've made that have boosted your self perception? What? No, Kate, Kate the Goose. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck in my head. What are small changes you've made that have boosted your self perception slash feeling of being put together? Um, I feel like this could be a physical thing and an emotional thing. Cause like right below it, it says like I'm talking, I'm I'm talking things like 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 lash extensions, nails, etc. Trying to feel less frazzled and more put together. No. So like the small changes that you could say that are physical could be putting on makeup for the day. Cause I know like for me most of the time I don't wear makeup, or when I do at the end of the day, like it's off the moment I walk into my house. Like I don't like wearing makeup that much. Yeah. So. Um, with that being said, like you could put on a face makeup, uh, if you don't have a lot of money, it's hard to do the whole thing with like the lash extensions, the nails, those aren't little changes or small changes in my opinion. Those are big changes. Like la like lash extensions make your they face can, look completely different. Yeah, they can change the look of um, and they're expensive. Um, so for me, it's as simple as like doing just my eyebrows or like doing that one thing that you feel self-conscious about, I guess. Um, and kind of making yourself feel... Or one really cool thing that I heard of that has kind of made more sense to me is when, when you're feeling really tired or like lazy or you don't really want to do much, as long as you do your hair and you don't do anything else, like you just do your hair, it's it makes you look more put together than you are. Yeah. Like when, I'm, when I get up for work, I'm like, I don't feel like putting on makeup, but at least I'll straighten my hair. So like my hair looks put together so I'll look more put together that's a good tip so just choosing one thing I guess to do um, or actually choosing your outfit and like wanting to wear something that makes you feel confident um, things like that that make you just feel more put together but the little things that I've done for that have been like I'll do my hair instead of my makeup if I'm feeling lazy that day or I'll just do that one thing in makeup that I want to look a specific way like my eyebrows or something but I feel like you could do that emotionally as well to feel be feeling like put together. Like for me, it's accomplishing the little things. Like the small things that you could do is like for me, it's been trying new things that I hear about like on TikTok that are easy to implement in my life. Implement. <laughs> I don't know why I said all like that. But um, like my cleaning habits, I always get overwhelmed and I tend to. Clean like most of us where I start with one thing and then that one thing leads me to another thing in another room and then I lose track of what I was cleaning and then it's just like um, chaos and I have things not put away and it's just like random stuff is clean and random stuff is like still out. Yeah. So I found this thing on, I don't remember if it was on TikTok or if it was just on YouTube or something or maybe Facebook, but uh, it was the cleaning method of starting in one room at a time and staying in that room until you get everything done. So like I'll start in the very back corner of our house and I'll make our way back this way. Yeah. So like I'll start in that room and then I'll I'll do like a loop and I'll finish the whole house going in that loop. And that way I'm not like going room to room forgetting what I did and didn't do. And just accomplishing little things like that and implementing that I feel like makes you feel more put together like I'm not um like a clumsy mess and I know how to do what I need to do and I accomplish things so yeah it's the uh, the just show up method like you just show up yeah you, you show up you as just you showing up is already half of the work so mm -hmm. slowly like I think they use that for the gym right yeah like they're like just show up and then you just show up you like walk for like 10 minutes and then leave and the next time 20 minutes and leave mm -hmm. you should probably do that but <laughs> But no, that's a, I think that's good advice. Yeah. As a dude, being put together can it it just depends. I think there's such a broad scope of of uh, like 
there's dudes that don't care how they look and there's dudes that do care how they look. Same thing with women, but I feel like society forces you to look a certain way more than men. So, oh, there it is. Uh, so, um, with men, it kind of, it, I feel like it varies a lot physically. Like, there's some guys that have to have their hair done a specific way. And then there's some guys that are just bald, so that's not even a problem. You know? <laughs> so, it just depends. I can put together for, mainly for dudes, is, um, like, they have, I, again, kind of going to the, back to the point, most guys are very materialistic in different ways. So having all the stuff that they want is kind of how they, they feel put together. And it can vary, like, if, if the guy is very, uh, uh, like, materialistic. Like, say that having a house and, like, or having their own apartment is important to them. As long as they have that, they feel somewhat put together. Or having a nice car, they feel put together. Having nice accomplishing shoes. Accomplishing their goals. Basically. Accomplishing their goals is what I feel. Having pride in what you do. Yeah, I feel have. makes guys get put to, get, feel like they're put together. Yeah. More than, unless it's, like, a stylish thing, like, maybe the guy likes to have a nice wardrobe. But I feel like that's something that society does to women a lot more than men is you have to Physical physically look a certain way to be put together yeah. or have a illustrious career to be put together. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I choose not to wear makeup, a lot of the time I'll get the, I'll get the compliment, not the compliment, the comment of, oh, you look tired today. Are you okay? Yeah. Like, oh, you look so tired. Do you need to go take a nap or something? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah. You get that a lot more now that you're pregnant, though. I do, yeah. <laughs> And I mean, it makes sense, yeah. right? But like, I'm sleeping less, so I have like yeah. more bags, and I—it's just natural part of it. But that's just like every time I don't wear makeup, it's like a, oh, you look tired. Are you doing okay? Are you sleeping okay? And it's like, yeah, I just naturally look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not glowing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think it kind of depends. But just do what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Just whatever, or like. Take little things like that. The like your steps. your advice is, is really good. Like like especially if you're in a situation where you can't afford the lashes. Afford the, the lashes or the nails or the nice clothes or the nice car or whatever. Just doing the little stuff, like wash your car. Make it look as nice as possible. You're in the like men yeah. side of things. I mean like, so. I wouldn't care about makeup, but some yeah. ladies do though. Yeah, some ladies yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next. Alrighty, so uh, ignoring the dogs play fighting in the background, uh, our next one now comes from the r slash ask men, and it's posted by you slash obdurate contrarian? Obdurate contrarian? Good job. <laughs> that I have says, no idea. That's as good as I would be able to do. I have no idea what that word means. Gotta read more books. Um, <laughs> how can we better support male survivors of... Um, assault and reduce stigma around seeking help so i'm guessing based on also a comment this also talks about like domestic violence and then sa yeah. but um i think the way to as a guy the way to better support male survivors of both is one to accept the fact that it happens to guys as well because I feel up until recently, you never really heard of a guy going through those situations or, admitting, you know, to or admitting to them, right? Because it was seen as being weak or just stuff that you would never happen, would never to, a happen to a guy. But the reality is, is, is it does happen, you know? And a lot of the times I feel like it happens at a younger age too mm -hmm. and I think that needs to be talked about because one thing that I feel kind of revolves around this and why I think a lot of people don't think it happens as much as it does is because men physically tend to be stronger right so I've heard this from like other guy friends in the past being like oh, I would never let that happen to him I, I beat up the person that that try to make that pass on me or whatever right so for one it like in terms of SA if it's a guy that's trying to like get that passed on you 
and he's like stronger than you or he beats you up beforehand or something like that <laughs> you know you ain't stopping it unfortunately mm -hmm. but um the other thing is it might have been something that went you went through at a young age you know where we, you were that vulnerable. vulnerable slightly more defenseless uh it might have been by like someone you knew as well most cases for both men and women happens by people that you know so i think just accepting the fact that it does happen and it can happen regardless of the age regardless of the gender whatever is one thing but also not criticizing men for coming out about it like i feel a lot of the times both men and uh, and women look down on guys that have been uh uh essayed or have been um in a situation with domestic violence you know and so not seeing them as lesser men can help not only bring more support but also encourage them to find and look for help to get out of it because if you think about it i mean um just like when we talk about women in those situations a lot of the times they feel trapped you know it might be for different reasons but they still the the mental state of those people is kind of a, a state of being trapped so not having that like in general it's hard to get out of those situations sometimes but not being able to talk about them as openly as you could if you were a woman so to speak uh, because you're afraid of being seen as a lesser of a man or that kind of stuff like like I feel like um, could help I think that's kind of the main two points on kind of reducing the stigma is accepting that it happens and then not not blaming the victim you should never blame the victim in either scenario what do you think? So there's like many situations where this is, could be applied. Like, it's not just SA, it's also DV, like, and also, not only that, but, um, like, uh, if you get robbed when you're outside and, like, you're walking down the street and you get robbed, and you're afraid to say that you got robbed because then you, you would think, oh, well, I didn't stand up for myself or I wasn't man enough to handle that. or nah. Like, you don't admit to something that happened to you. Regardless of what it was, I feel like men tend to just, like, brush it under the rug and they're like, well, if it's embarrassing, I just won't share it and I'll just suck it up and I'll just deal with whatever the consequences are. Um, I feel like manliness shouldn't be taken from the physical aspect of how you can protect. I think it's how you handle the situation emotionally and with those around you. Yeah, I agree. Like, if you're there to support your partner through it or if you're there to support someone else your through friend. it, like, your friend or whatever, and you're able to, like, keep your cool and you're able to, like, save the person that you're with, like, that's more manly to me than, like, being like, let's, let's fight it out so I can I don't know be about, manly. I don't know I don't about think, you. I don't think that's always a solution. <laughs> yeah, if I see a gun pointed at me, here's yeah, my wallet. Your mine. knowledge of, like, <laughs> being able to survive the situation in and of itself, I think, is more manly than just saying, like, oh, I fought my way back for yeah, Like, it's not just about can't fighting. Can't stop a bullet. <laughs> yeah, you're, it, yeah, exactly. Like, your fist can't stop a bullet. Like, it, like you can't just think, okay, well, I'm just going to punch this guy in the face and move, we're going to get away with it. Like, yeah. if it takes, you know, putting your pride aside to save your family, that is more manly to me than someone standing up and be like, oh, I, I fought that guy. I almost died, but I fought that guy, you know? And it could cause yeah. worse things to happen if you don't think things through. You mentioning that, I think it's our, like, our kind of traditional role as the protector that I feel stops a lot of guys from from uh, sharing these experiences and being accepting of the fact that they happen because as a guy if you're supposed to be the protector right um, how can you protect someone where you couldn't you couldn't protect yourself yeah so it's kind of a big letdown that I feel that then, and then to that point like at least in the traditional roles of things like uh, you know wants to say hi um, 
I would be scared to share that with like a potential partner because then I don't want them to see me as weak, which then would cause like them to not think you can, think protect, I can them. protect them and yeah. then be less attracted to me. And I think part of what can help in those cases is knowing that women or any potential partner is okay with well i think you need to find yourself a woman that doesn't think of themselves as needing protection from a man because at the end of the day if we're both getting robbed at gunpoint like regardless of what you say or do i have the same amount of power in that situation or powerlessness like we both have our hands up we both have to figure out what to do next. Like, regardless of you being a man and me being a female has nothing to do with the fact that, like, we're going to survive just because you decide to say something. Yeah. Or do something. Like, I could do or say the same thing and something could happen and we could end up being fine. Like, um, having that mentality is... And sharing that mentality with more people, having those conversations, like, with friends, like, when things like this come up and you have a friend group and you're like... Like, for us, our friend group's very conversational. We have a lot of conversations with our friends. And if, like, this were to come up, we would talk about how it doesn't make you a bigger or better man than, you know, just being there to support that person and help them, you know? And then that'll help with the stigma of not, of you know, the man having to be the one to step up. Yeah. Because then it, it shares the woman's, the woman's perspective and point of view being shared more, I think will help support and reduce the stigma just as much as it would for like, um, the other way around when women think that all men care about our looks. If you had men talking about how it's not just about looks, looks, it would create that, it would create that bridge and, and disconnect the stigma of, oh, men just care about looks. Cause then you would think, oh, well I had a friend who mentioned that he doesn't just care about looks. He cares about this, he cares about that. Yeah. So like it's having that conversation and the women actually speaking up about it and sharing their thoughts of what they actually feel when it comes to this. Cause with essay, that's a really hard one too, because they don't feel like they can share. They feel like, oh, if I can't, if I couldn't protect myself, how could I protect that person? Yeah. Which I mean, it makes sense, but also at the same time, like Vulnerability, like being vulnerable to something like that and not having control, it doesn't mean that you're weak. It means that you were taken advantage of. And that weakness, there, there isn't weakness from that. There's strength. There's a, um, you survived a situation. It's not a, oh, I was weak and couldn't handle a situation. It was a, you were thrown into something that you were supposed to experience according to your life and what happened. And you survived it. You were able to overcome it. You were able to become a better man because of it. Yeah. Like, that's what should be the main focus from it, and that's what should be shared from the women's perspective so that men don't feel so self-conscious about it. Yeah. Because, like, they have this comment on here where it's saying, okay, you can create, like, an online forum, kind of like a men's club for them to feel safe to talk about it, which you can totally do that. But men talking to other men sometimes is really hard too because you're like you need men, perspective you need me, you need the perspective of the other sex especially if that's the opinion you're worried about if you're worried about the female perspective and you're like well women won't think as much of me because of it like hearing it from another woman's perspective of saying she doesn't care about those things she cares about it this way and this way and she thinks that you become this and you, you're a better man because of it you're a stronger man because of it Hearing that opinion over the person that you care about, that, that opinion of, that's what matters, I think, most. Because hearing it from another man, most of the time when you're in those clubs, it's from another man who's been essayed or another man that has been through DV. And it's like, okay, you can talk to that person and have similarities and be like, yeah, we both went through it. But does that end the stigma of, does that mean we're both weak? Yeah, yeah I think you know? getting that outside perspective is important. Yeah. Because the... Because it then you could think that stigma is still there, and oh, we just no, both are weak. We now we both, both weak now, we both know we both couldn't handle it, or whatever. Well, Instead of hearing it from the person's opinion that you actually care about, of oh, they don't think that way, so why should I think that myself? Yeah. So I feel like I feel like that goes for a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. I feel like for like the woman's Getting voice needs to be louder on it. Cause I don't I don't think women talk about it that much. 
women talk about their own essay situations and their own DV situations, but they hardly ever are like, let's talk about the male's perspective of this. Like, yeah. I hardly ever hear that. Regardless if they admit that it happens or not, they don't talk about it. They just admit that it happens. Yeah. They don't talk about what that makes the man feel and how that's affected because not men actually want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like that goes for, for both ways. Like, because you hear a lot of, like, that Me Too movement and stuff. And I feel like, like there's a lot of, like, male supporters that support that. On the opposite side, there should be as many women supporters supporting, like, the, the male side of things when mm-hmm. males have been essayed or, or DV'd. Because it does happen, and if, if both sides share their perspective, it'll show that, hey, this is actually more of a human problem rather than a male or female problem. Like, there are shitty people in this world that choose to do this to other people, and we need to support anyone that's gone through the yeah. similar situation, you know? Instead of just, oh, only these people or only these people get go through it, you know? Yeah. Or these people should get help, but these people can handle it on their own. Mm-hmm. You know? But yeah, I think just kind of uniting into one instead of just... It takes that separating. woman talking about it, though. Because, like, a lot of women won't talk about it. Yeah. Like, they don't mention it. They don't think of it. I think it's not just that they don't think of it. It's that they either haven't heard that happen to a, per- a close personal partner or friend of theirs. I think they just think of, they hear more of it from their girlfriends. Because their girlfriends talk about it. Yeah, they're most more of the time. open about it. They're more open about so it. So, yeah. So, then the conversation happens with women more than it does with men. Yeah. So yeah, just being more open about it in general. Yeah. It will reduce the stigma on, on its own. Mm-hmm. Making it more comfortable to talk about. All right. Next. All right. Uh, this one comes from the relationship advice thread. Subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> Subreddit. I'll get it one day. Well, one, Subreddit. One day. Subreddit. Okay. Um, it comes from u slash creek run. Nine. Oh, Damn, those of... contacts are doing some work. I know. <laughs> I got a new script, guys, yeah. and I can read now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, I, I was waiting for the uh, creep. Yeah, I don't but know. But no. Yeah, that's, that's um, okay, so it says, I, it says, I, a 35-year-old female, just found out I am pregnant. My partner, 33-year-old male, wants an abortion. Um, we went, oh, sorry. We knew each other the in dyslexia college. Doesn't I know go away, that though. doesn't go away. Contacts. <laughs> we knew each other in college and messed around and exclusively for about two to three years. Not a exclusive. year, not exclusively. Um, a year and a half ago, over a decade later, we reconnected and pretty much immediately picked up where we left off, uh, but older, more mature. We had both been abstinent for various reasons for a, a, at least a couple years. I didn't want to go on birth control as the hormones messed me up. Uh, holler to that sister because I hate birth control too. Uh, he didn't wear a condom. Ooh. Uh, my hormones have never been normal and my cycle anything but regular. That's no bueno. I haven't been in on any form of birth control since 2015. I honestly thought I could not get pregnant. But you were abstinent, so like, okay, let's well, just continue. Yeah, yeah, who knows when um, they started dating. I've wanted to be a mom since I was a little girl, uh, but gave up on those aspirations a long time ago. A year and a half ago, we had a conversation. If I got pregnant, I would get an abortion. Excuse me. <laughs> he remembers this conversation as very black and white. I remember it more as we will cross that bridge when we get when we come to it. Either way, I honestly didn't put much stock in, in in it. I truly thought I was unable to become pregnant due to my health history. Well, here we are. I'm pregnant. As with any big thing, big feelings are being had. I am overwhelmed. Elation at the revelation I can conceive. Uh, joy that this man I have loved for 15 years is the other part of it. Fear about the future. He is overwhelmed with the emotion as well. I want to keep the pregnancy. He feels that I've been that I have betrayed him, that I am not keeping a promise I don't remember making in such black and white terms. 
that he cannot trust me anymore, that we cannot be friends anymore because of how deeply I hurt him. I never thought this could happen. It feels like a miracle to me. It feels like a life sentence to him. I am devastated at his response and reaction. He is leaving for a month of for work in another place. I worried he won't come back. I'm worried he won't come back after this job. I'm worried that even if I do abort now, our relationship is not salvageable. Nothing will ever be the same. I don't know what to do. So before we start this one, I want to say our opinions are our own. If you don't agree with them, that's fine. Like, we're not trying to tell you what to do. Everyone has their own opinion. Everyone has their own opinion. Yeah. Uh, so, And yeah. they're allowed to that opinion. Yeah. And you're, you have your own situation. You have your own situation. So... But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna share our, our two cents on this. Do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I guess I can go first. Since the so, male is the problem, no I'm kidding. Damn. <laughs> Rico, beat her up. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like whatever. <laughs> They're both like dead asleep. You should take a picture of that. I don't have my. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> They're both like just chilling. Nala looks like she's drunk and just passed out. <laughs> But anyway, um, so first thing, given that they both have such a different recollection of events, I, I want, for one, I think that's not unheard of. Like, I feel you have like a tape recorder brain where you remember exactly what time, what second <laughs> I said something. Yeah. And I just remember a vague semblance of the conversation. So I think that's probably what's happening here because I think just dude brain and girl brain work different but i do think that this is something that might have had to have had a deeper conversation on because it seems like the the woman in this case really wanted kids but was never able to have them so was kind of like well i'm never gonna get them so I'll, we'll just get an abortion like didn't really think much of it you know uh in her mind, though, she did mention that she remembers it more as a, we will cross that bridge when it comes to it. That being said, as a dude, if you're not specific, we take things to face value. Literal. So that might have come across as, yeah, no, we'll get an abortion for sure. Which is probably what he feels so hurt and betrayed. Uh, I think... I don't know how deep this conversation went into, but for sure before any of this happened, and this just in general with long-term relationships, I think you have to have the conversations, like the deep conversations of what comes in the future, whether that be finances, kids, life goals, career goals, all that should come early on in the relationship if it's a long-term relationship. If you guys are just fooling around and you know you're just fooling around, you don't want anything serious, then okay, yeah, those conversations could come later. But if if it gets serious and you're like, okay, I've been with this person for like three years, this is going somewhere, it's time to have those conversations to avoid problems like this, but also to see if you're even on the same path. Because in this case, it seems like a pregnancy is a deal breaker kind of situation for both of them. For one, the girl seems like this is a miracle to her she wants to keep it right and secondly the guy it seems like it's a deal breaker to have a kid to begin with you know like he based on her writing here it seems like he's so heartbroken about having a kid or sort of torn about having a kid that he he feels like leaving so that that's something that should have happened in the first place uh now though I think, and this kind of comes with, I guess, a little bit more maturity and a little bit more self-awareness, is both of you would have to have a conversation and share in depth what, in depth, sorry, my <laughs> second language, um, share in depth um, how, uh, how you both really feel about it. Because me as a guy and me loving you, right? If you were to tell me, hey, you know, I had always wanted kids, but after 15 years 
of not taking any precaution at all, nothing ever happened, I thought I was barren, this seems like a miracle to me, or this seems like uh, something that shouldn't be possible, so it's kind of fulfilling a long, a long time like dream of mine, or a long time, um, I guess, aspiration of mine, you know, like, me as a guy, I would be more understandable of that, you know, like, understanding, understanding of that, yeah, understandable, understandable is not a word, babe, <laughs> Jesus, um, <laughs> so I, I would be more understanding, especially loving you, I wouldn't want to take away your dream like that, you know, just because my feelings are hurt because we understood the conversation that we had 15 years ago was different, you know, like I, I think I would be able to understand that and maybe come up with a solution or something, you know, but I couldn't, I feeling the way I feel about you which I hope that this guy feels about her, I couldn't just be like, no, like your dream doesn't matter. So I don't think he knows how important this is to her, you know? Secondly, his reasoning should, his, is valid as well, you know? So he should be able to share exactly why a kid isn't in his cards, you know? And hear him out, you know? Uh, and then make a decision based on that at the end of the day, I think both parents, the mom, and then this is where it kind of gets tricky in the topic. The mom kind of has a little bit more of a say than the dad because she is the one like to go has to go operation. through the, the operation, has to go through the emotional ramifications of it, the physical ramifications of it, regardless if she keeps it or not. So the mom does have a little bit more of a say, but the dad does have a say in it because it takes two to tango. It is the, his kid too. The mom didn't just spawn a kid. Yeah. So um, I think you guys should talk it out. And if anything, you know, I've heard of situations where the guy just resigns his, his uh, parental, rights. parental rights over to the mom. If that's the case, you know, and so be it. It sucks after a 15 year relationship, which is why it's important to have these conversations early on and actually resolve them early on. Not we'll cross it when we get there. I think that was kind of a big mistake in this situation is we have a concrete answer early on because I don't want to have this type of problem in 15 years. But yeah, if, if push comes to shove, if you want to keep it, he wants nothing to do with it. And it's that much of a deal breaker for both of you. You might. You have to choose what's you, best yeah, for you. Yeah, you have to choose what's best for you. You have to maybe do that. He waves his parental rights, or maybe he doesn't wave them, but you don't force him to be a part, of the, be a part yeah. of the. Yeah. And then if he chooses to later come around and be a part of his life, then that's up to him. But I think, um, yeah, I think both parties should be able to share their opinion. And hopefully come to a mutual agreement hmm. whether which way it might go but I think if they if the guy truly loves her he wouldn't force her to get an abortion if I if I really felt like you know what I hate kids like like I'm just gonna like hate being a dad but I love you so much that I wouldn't take this miracle or this dream of yours away I would just step away and be like hey you know what you can have it. <laughs> Sorry, it didn't work out. As heartbreaking as that would be, but I couldn't. I feel like, given how long it's been that she hasn't been able to get pregnant, asking you to terminate that would be more heartbreaking than losing me. Mm -hmm. So then I would be like, yeah. unless I was wearing an ice cream. <laughs> Maybe you so, would be more devastated. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead. I, I think that this situation is kind of like, like you said, I agree with the whole beforehand. They should have had this conversation. But regardless, it's a 15-year relationship and people change. Opinions change. So regardless if you had that discussion, it said they had that discussion a year and a half ago about 
the black and white conversation of yes, it's an abortion. Um, was it a year? It, it says a year and a half ago we had a conversation oh, if I got pregnant. Yeah. So this was recent. This was Sorry, a year and a half off. ago. That's okay. Um, it was a year and a half ago that they had this conversation of uh, we're gonna have an abortion if it comes to it. Um, <clears throat> She, if that's what she said, like if he said that, yes, they, that, that was the the conversation was, yes, you would get an abortion. That is completely different than that. We'll get to it when, when it happens, because if he remembers you agreeing that you would get an abortion, that is something you don't really forget. I feel like that's kind of unfair of her to be like oh well i felt we would cross it when when we came to it because i didn't think it was possible never mind that is different than her saying i would get an abortion if i got pregnant because that means you're assuming that you can get pregnant because you did say yes i would get an abortion if you didn't think you could have kids you wouldn't agree to get an abortion because you'd be like well the likeliness isn't really there so we'll cross it when we get there that's a different conversation on top of that um it's not just about getting a, a, an abortion it's about like having a relationship with someone that also wants the same thing as you if you always wanted children and he brought up abortion that should have been a red flag yeah because she said okay i wanted to have kids i just didn't think i was able to and he want and he was like i wanted abortion like that's it immediately that should have been a oh well if i am ever capable of having kids this isn't going to go well Like, that should have been a red flag for her and should have been a bigger conversation, not just one that you say we've crossed a bridge when we get to it. Because even though you don't know if you're capable or not, um, it could happen. Obviously, it did happen. And that's why when situations like that come up and it's a big thing for you and for him, that should have been a bigger conversation, period. Um, And he does have... I think he does have the right to ask for an abortion. I just don't think it's right. Like, I feel like, uh, like you said, a better choice would be him stepping away, which it sounds like he is. It sounds like, but he's also making it out to be like she's the nightmare. She's the evil. Yeah, she's the person being difficult where it's like... um, It's both. It's... I think. It is both, but at the end of the day, because she said she wanted to keep it, regardless of the conversation that you had... It's where you stand now because it's an actual possibility instead of just a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, like, regardless of if you said it a year and a half ago or not, people change, situations change. And because it's actually something that she's going through, she's allowed to change her mind. Especially because of the hormones, the emotions that come with it. Like she said, big feelings are are behind it. You're going to maybe change how you feel because it's something you never saw yourself going through. Yeah, so, like experiences change the way you think, yeah. and this is one big experience. Yeah. So it could be that maybe at one point, she without did agree. she did agree, she was like, "Yeah, you know what?" But we'll now it changed. It. But, now, but that's okay. You're allowed to change how you feel, especially when it's something that big. And so, at the end of the day, she's got two choices. She's she could either choose to be with this man who they've been together for a long time. She says it's the love of her life, or she can choose to go on this new journey um, with this baby. And it sounds like it's a deal breaker for him that he doesn't want to have the child. So regardless, you're 35, girl, and he is 33. It's not like you're in your 20s. Yeah, your Um, clock's ticking if you ever want to. Not just clock ticking, but like you're old enough to be mature enough to make a decision on your own and to say, I'm keeping this child regardless. That's true. It's like if you were 20 and you're like, oh, I'm like, you know, still living with my parents and, or, you know, like you don't have a career set or you're like unable to financially support the child that would be different but like the fact that she's wanting to keep this child you're making that choice to keep the child and if that is something that is a greater value to you than being with him then that's your choice obviously regardless of if you agree or not don't be like oh i because then if you guilt him into keeping this child it's not going to be good. He's not going to love it, or he's not going to treat it fair, or you're going to have arguments about it for the rest of your lives, and you're not actually going to have a happy relationship, and a relationship is going to change. So it's not going to be the same regardless. Yeah, and I think that's why it's important. Like if you Make the choice to... that you want yeah. that that is right for you, because if you decide to have the abortion to keep him around, that is also going to affect your relationship, because then you're going to think back to... 
I this is something that I never thought I could possibly do. I got it. And now I don't have it. Anymore. Imagine three years from now, and he's like, "Yeah, I do want to have a kid now." And you start trying, you can't have another kid. Yeah. It's gonna be a huge argument of we could have had one if you weren't so immature, or we could have had one because you were already blessed with one and you decided to make me get rid of it. And like all that resentment is gonna come back. So regardless, the relationship is done. Like, you guys already have this is too big of a thing to not affect it, either choice you make. So make the choice that's going to make you happy, not the choice that's, that's going to make him happy. Yeah. You know? And with him, like, it's sad to say, but the, tr- the child is, of course, a, the father's and hers, right? But at the end of the day, like, he doesn't have to be there yeah. and take care of it. If he is one that's saying, I don't want kids, I'm sorry, but you knew the consequences of having unprotected sex with someone who was not on birth control. The possibility was there. So regardless if she agreed to get an abortion or not, that is never always promised. Yeah. That always, that circumstance can always change. You can never say, yes, I'm always going to get an abortion 20 years from now. I know I'm going to want an abortion. Like things change. You can't just assume that that's going to be your way out of it. You should have wrapped your willy. I'm sorry. You <laughs> should have. Don't be silly. Don't be silly and wrap your willy. willy. Or ask her to go on birth control if that was something you really yeah. didn't want. Especially, like you said, pointing out their age. I thought you were talking about like her... <laughs> uh, like her, her father. <laughs> Rico. <laughs> the like, garbage man like, won't... Yeah, right? Garbage man won't hurt you. But uh, uh, especially... Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, at their age. Yeah. yeah. Like... You, you know the consequences of having unprotected sex. If you don't want a baby, you know, take the responsible <laughs> actions. Way through it, yeah. So, There's different forms of birth control. There's, especially if her cycle wasn't regular, she should have gone to the doctor and figured out why it wasn't regular and what she could have done to make yeah. it regular. And the guy had, there's multiple... Get get a, a vasectomy yeah. if you're really if you're really interested like you're in not having years kids. Old. You're 33, yeah. You're you know the you know that at this yeah. point in time the procedure's like five minutes long. You have like a one day recovery, and you would never have to worry about getting her pregnant. Take that into your own hands, and then now that this is a thing, and you're like, oh well, now you're the bad guy. Yeah. You're the one who just it takes two. You're the one who decided to not wrap your willy, and you're the one who up. decided. To, to go through and have unprotected sex. So, and knowing her being irregular and knowing that she's not on birth control for the past 15 years, she hasn't been on birth control or whatever, however long. I don't even know how long she's been on birth control. I don't know. She control. said she yeah. Since 2015. So, <clears throat> well, yeah. what, uh, eight years? Maybe seven years? Maybe. So, like, the fact that she was not on birth control for seven years, mm, okay, yeah, I'm going to probably wrap my willy. Or we're going to talk about vasectomy. Or we're going to talk about something else where we never have to worry about an abortion because an abortion is hard on the body. Like, that should never be your solution of, oh, yeah. I'll just get an abortion because it's easy. It is not easy. It is a hard process the woman goes through. It is a hard, it, it's hard healing process. It, it goes through your hormones. It affects your body. You get really bad cramps. You get all these side effects. Yeah, because your body was preparing for yeah. birth and then all of a sudden it was taken away yeah. from it. So it's so going like, to readjust everything. Your whole solution of, oh, we can just have unprotected sex and I can have sex with you the way I want and then you're just going to have to get rid of it. You're putting all your responsibility on the woman and it's expensive too. It's an expensive procedure and it's something that is, um, it takes an emotional toll. Getting a vasectomy is not an emotional toll. I mean, sure, like... For guys, okay, you could be like, no, I'm oh, well, I'm going to lose my manlyhood or whatever. They, okay, I think, <laughs> let's say this, they don't chop your nuts off. Yeah. They're like, they literally just snip the little They prevent the your friends from coming through. Yeah, like, so you're not going to lose your And it's your reversible. Manlyhood. Yeah. And it's oh, they reversible. Don't, they don't even snip it, right? They just, like, twist it. Yeah, they, like, yeah. They tie, them they tie it, I think. But either way, either like, way, it's reversible. You're re- yeah, you're still gonna have. You are relying on her to do all the dirty science. work. Well. You're relying on her to do all the dirty work instead of taking responsibility and saying, "Oh, if I if I really wanted no children, for sure, yeah. and I'm gonna hate you for it if you get pregnant, you choose to keep and you choose to keep it. That is not okay. And then that yeah that yeah. that got me heated. You gotta be responsible for your actions. Yeah, if you really don't want kids. You should take responsibility and 
either wrap your willy or choose to get a vasectomy. Well, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. To, <laughs> Sorry. Kind of, where's the cold bucket of water I always keep the next... <laughs> Because no. she's like, oh, I, I, you know, it's a miracle, and, like, I want to keep it, and that's great, and she can keep it, but, like, you had unprotected sex, dude. Like, what did you expect? Yeah. Just because she said she'd get an abortion, that that changes. A year and a half ago, a lot of things change. Yeah. The, the experience itself changes. Um, but, yeah, I think just sitting down again, if he comes back, having a, com- a deeper conversation. And if he doesn't come back, great. You already have your choice made for you. Yeah. And you're going to be happy regardless because it's something that you wanted. Yeah. It's not an, an unwanted pregnancy. It's yeah. a wanted pregnancy. And it's, a, like, it's a prized pregnancy, but it's a wanted yeah. one nonetheless. So, yeah, just like you said, do what's best for you. If And then give him the choice if he wants to be a part of it. Great. If not, then oh well. You do you, boo. But... I think still having a conversation and getting that out there. Yeah. They should have had a conversation, but too late. Like, it's too late now, now. it's make a choice. Now it, it's, do you want to have yeah. a baby or do you want to have this man in your life? That and is, this man does not sound like a great, am I? Yeah. <laughs> he does not sound like he's this great, fantastic partner. Like, well, you don't know. If like, he was, he would be accepting and loving towards her regardless of her decision. True, and that's why I mean we are only getting one side of the story. Yeah. I don't know if he knows how important this is because she might have not brought up how yeah but he's talking about how he feels betrayed and i'm like yeah because he might have not known how she has been trying to get pregnant for a long regardless if your feel feelings can change so if she did change her mind he should have still been accepting you not feel like she's betrayed true but he should have been like here are our other options not oh this is all your fault yeah that's not a way to go about it that's true it's not the way to go about it but i can see why he felt betrayed he didn't react the proper way but that's what I meant. Like, his feelings are still valid, and they should explore why he's feeling that way and why she's feeling that way. Right. Because he might not know the full story, story behind she why she's so story. happy, and he doesn't know the full yeah. story. And if that doesn't work out, then yeah. make your own decision. Have the kid if you want, or make a decision together if you truly value that relationship enough to supersede the pregnancy, mm-hmm. and do the abortion, or... Go your separate ways and don't do the abortion. And just a little tip for that guy, get a vasectomy. Yeah. <laughs> get a vasectomy. If you don't want kids with And your, this is that big of a deal yeah, for you, get, get a, a vasectomy. vasectomy. Do not rely on the woman to go through all of the burden of well, getting rid of a child. That is on you, sir. If yeah. that is something you don't want, you can take care of it. Yeah. And for people in, that are not in this situation, as I mentioned before, have this conversation beforehand beforehand it's very important <clears throat> and we talked about kids the first <laughs> it was like the first two maybe months that two months. we were talking yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we were 18 yeah we, we were 18, 18 and we're like we don't know what our future holds but this yeah. is something that we want or we hadn't we even want. taken the baby making step yet. yeah <laughs> we were talking about yeah. it <laughs> we were just talking about it having a conversation <laughs> yeah because you have to and like i said finances career life path in general and kids there might be more than a missing religion. but religion five there you go politics six although in my opinion politics shouldn't like but it matters to some people it so that does to have to have a conversation cuz some people are like right or die on politics yeah true so that would be an important conversation I guess. but yeah six things six pillars like um what was i going to say oh yeah politics religion kids future path um finances and career if there's a pro like if there's a deal breaker in one of those six you better talk about it to the fullest extent and decide hey am i gonna waste my time here or and see where it goes yeah uh, because it might not be a waste of time you might yeah. change your mind in the future and some people you might feel because you don't know it's a long-term relationship until you're in that long-term part of it but well no like if you've been dating for like two to three years like that's a good point to have it you haven't gotten tired of each other in three years. It's it's good to have it at that point. Maybe having a conversation again, because your opinion. Yeah, is that's true. Retouching is yeah. a good thing. Like like every know. every so often retouching on how you feel about certain things. And if things have idea. changed, yeah. Because people change over time. Like that's just that's just the way that life goes. Opinions change all yeah. the time. So yeah, that's a good one. 
I mean, I didn't want kids or marriage when we first met. Yeah, that's And true. look at us now. <laughs> she put a ring Married on Married and a bun in the oven. She liked it so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, things change. Yeah, things change. Like me, I always knew I wanted kids yeah. and getting married. And you were willing to test that with me, knowing I didn't want kids. Well, yeah, but like... And that was a big risk to take. It, it was a big risk to take, but at the same time, like, I was okay. Ne- so like, went. no, like, I was okay never marrying, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, if we were just, like, like, partners. Partners. Like, like, like partners. Like, like, partners, that'd be fine. I wouldn't care. The kids was a little bit bigger, but you weren't super shut off on that. Like I you, was like, this is what I want, but it could change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you, you, you weren't like, no, I'll never want kids. Yeah. Uh, have you had that kind of demeanor to it? I it might have been, been like, mm, okay, maybe this might not work. But you saw the little crack in the door uh, and kept it open. Uh, You're like, oh, there's hope. She might want kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I started um, um, opening your eyes up when you were asleep and putting baby pictures in front of you. <laughs> Slowly changing and altering your mind. I, I am Kate altering your eyes. <laughs> or what was that movie that we saw? Don't worry, darling. Where they do like the oh, simulation. Oh no, my gosh! <laughs> oh, yeah. spoiler. Sorry. Oh <laughs> Damn. no! You spoiled it for so many people. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, yeah. So just talk about it. If it's a deal breaker. Felt like spoiler warning. Okay. Yeah. If it's a if it's a deal breaker, like just have that conversation before it becomes, before it breaks the deal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next. next. Um. <laughs> Alrighty, so the next one is actually from a new subreddit we haven't done before. Um, it's the r slash dating advice. Uh, and this comes uh, posted by you slash husband wife underscore TA. And it says, do women judge men they are dating who previously used the services of sex workers during a tough time? This is the story of Mark and Jenny. Mark is a Wall Street banker who makes 300 to 400 k a year. Damn, that's a nice salary. Uh, from 22 to 32, he was hustling at a name brand investment bank, meaning he traveled and had long hours for work. Mark used the services of a sex worker. Oh, here comes Trashman. Uh, Mark used the services of sex worker for two to three for a two to three year period when he was trying to get his promotion and ran, in, ran into a tough time with personal stuff and a cold spell dating in New York City. A few years later, he meets Jenny, who is in marketing. They are going steady, and Mark is honest and tells her that he used to consult a sex worker because he felt lonely, but wanted some physical connection while he wasn't able to date because his work and because of his work and travels. Jenny makes uh, 100 to 120K and is a few years younger than Mark. She's a social and charismatic girl who has never had trouble dating in New York City. I know her personally, and Jenny has this uh, asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> I know her personally, and Jenny is a creative type in fashion marketing with a greater career tracks and line of suitors. She's really open about many things and even said sex work is work a few years back. But she reached out to us to discuss what we thought about Mark's old romps. We like to have both of, we like how both of them are together and didn't want to say anything to get them to break up and said you should focus on the many and opportunity you have now rather than look into everybody's past. That's a little weird sentence or maybe I read it wrong. However, she can't get over the fact that Mark was lonely enough to seek help and pay for someone's friendship. She admittedly feels jealous because it's like an ex that Mark can reach out to at any time and probably knows more tricks than she does and feels insecure. TLDR, a good friend is dating a guy who had used the services of a sex worker in the past. They are really into each other and she can't get over this. So would she, so would, what would she, what do, would she do or how? how should she go about this? Um, I'll let you go first. Yeah. yeah as a woman, <laughs> Uh, sex work, sex work is work, I think, and regardless of how he was feeling or not, he, it's a service you're allowed to pay for. Uh, I mean, well, 
I think specific services because <laughs> like some is illegal, right? So yeah, well, like, yeah. On top of that, I would say that sex work is work when it's done willingly. One hundred percent, which is what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, hopefully he wasn't, he right. wasn't, like, a pimp or something. No, it says he was just, what? no. Well, I'm just, a, <laughs> just a, hey, sex trafficking okay. is real. I'm just hoping yeah. that it wasn't a poor woman that was getting It says out. that he still has access to talk to her and stuff. That doesn't mean but she I doesn't see what have you a mean. pimp. Okay, regardless of that, um, I think that the woman is overreacting. The guy is choosing to be with her. Um, it's just like being jealous over any other ex-girlfriend. Like, yeah. uh, there's a reason why he's not with her. There's a reason why they're not together. There's a reason why he chose you. Um, be confident in that. Be confident in the fact that he's with you. If he didn't want to be with you, he wouldn't be with you. He would be with this girl, right? And so, of course, you have to worry about cheating and stuff. But, like, regardless, I would just feel confident in the fact that, um... He chose to be with you. He chose to be open and honest with you and tell you about it, which means I think it's a big step. is a huge step that a man is willing to admit that because that is something that ne- not necessarily he'd be proud of, you know, um, and that he like is being open and honest with you in general is like a great sign that he wants to be with you, and um, the whole being insecure about because what she can do. Uh, if that's her job, that's her job, and she's obviously had more experience. Um, but regardless, he is with you, and if he was not happy with stuff that's going on in the bedroom, he'd probably let you know, considering he did let you know about this, right? Yeah. So, um, and he was, like, lonely and stuff. I don't think she should judge him for that. Like, he was allowed to do it, you know? He was allowed to hire someone to do that, especially if he was feeling a certain way. That's better than taking advantage of someone or uh, or not doing anything and then getting depressed and like maybe doing something else that he yeah. regret. Like there, like he chose to do something and find an outlet. And any if he stopped doing that and he's no longer doing that, and he found her, she should get over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Firstly. Kind of a weird. I don't know why they included their salaries. Like I feel like Who that cares has how much nothing they to make. do with it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, even in the city that they're in. Yeah, like it doesn't matter. But anyway, like I'm like okay, weird flex. But um, yeah, I agree. Like, like uh, aside from what I said about sex work, like hopefully it wasn't like through a pimp or something. But yeah, it's kind of like a. It's kind of like an ex. Like like she mentioned that. That it's like an ex that she can reach out to any time. That's any ex. Yeah. If I could, like, I could reach out to an ex-girlfriend at any point in time if I really wanted to, you know? Just because she's a sex worker doesn't mean anything. And he reached out to her when he was in a lonely time yeah. in his life. Not yeah. when he was he just, was like, just dating feeling someone like and yeah. feeling like having It was sex. based off of, like, his loneliness. Yeah. And because he's not lonely anymore because he has you, yeah. that's not something he has to worry about. And I, I agree with you. And I think, uh, uh, um... I speak for a lot of men out there. We, if we didn't like you, we wouldn't be with you, regardless of looks or personality well, or something. Cheating does happen, right? But even cheaters pick you because they like you. You know, yeah. they might be the type to get bored of you easily, or be the type to not communicate well enough to have all their needs filled, so they look for it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But regardless of that, they still picked you because they liked you in some way or the other, you know? So given, as you said, that he's being honest and he told you this, because me being a guy, and this could be different for, for other guys, paying for sex wouldn't be something that I would be necessarily proud of. Because uh, one, it's kind of taboo depending where you're at. So it would feel weird telling someone that I paid for it Two, in like guy culture I feel like 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 not that I view it this way but you know how people are like like oh yeah I get a lot of girls right kind of paying for it kind of discounts that part of it it's not as manly because it looks like you can't get right and regularly you know so it, it, depending on the type of guy you are, that is something that you might not necessarily be proud of. So it takes a lot of guts to be honest about it. Mm-hmm. Not only that, it's something that 
if he planned to do again in the future, he would have probably not brought it up to you. Because so he could get away with it. He could get away with it, exactly. Yeah. Like if he was the type of guy to be like, Well, if she ever doesn't want if I can't ever yeah, get it from her, I'll just get it from her. Forget her. Forget yeah. it for her. He, he wouldn't have said anything because then that would have been something that you would That'd have known about. Yeah. Exactly. And you would have thought about if he all of a sudden didn't want to do anything with you. Mm -hmm. So I think she's overthinking it a little bit too much. She should, she should um, just kind of take it like an ex. Like, like trust him enough to know that he won't go back to her. And kind of realize how important that step of him even sharing it with her was and just enjoy the time you guys have you know like mm -hmm. like enjoy the friendship it seems like he just was at that point in time that even if he wanted to have like a, a relationship he could enough yeah. because of his line of work like wall street bankers especially making that much money me being in finance, I know that guy was probably not sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> making that much money as a Wall Street, this, this dude was sleeping two hours uh, uh, a freaking night. He wouldn't have had time for a real relationship, you know? Yeah. So that was his easiest way of getting some sort of, of connection. Yeah. And humans need connection. And I think guys are a little bit more of a... Physical, physical love emotional. language than emotional so he might have felt that like you said that might have prevented him from from doing something worse yeah. you know of him getting that release and that physical connection with someone else might have been just what he needed to get through that time yeah so i don't think you should judge him i think you should leave it in the past focus on the good yeah, yeah focus on focus on the future because you wouldn't like it's like when people have like I'm sure she's made mistakes like he yeah. has like she she has to look at her own mm -hmm. her own life and then be like well would he judge me for what I did with this oh, or everyone yeah has everyone has their, their own. luggage that they care about. yeah it's like with relationships where one partner has like a huge body count and the other one doesn't you know mm -hmm. like you have to kind of accept their past as long as it doesn't continue in the future kind yep. of that thing you know like people we said it in the last topic people change like just because he resorted to sex work in the past doesn't mean he's in the same mental mental state now doesn't mean he's in the same professional state now where he feels like he needs to, to seek out that kind of companionship yep hmm. next <laughs> i was about to say it again too you did like the movie yeah <laughs> you read it Okay. Would you rather Reddit? What is it called? <laughs> Subreddit. <laughs> Subreddit. I was close. Yeah. Um, got the website. Right? Would you rather be Would you rather be able to summon and communicate with actual ghosts, or possess the ability to see up to a thousand years in the future? I would choose future. Yeah. Yeah. Talking to ghosts is creepy. <laughs> like it'd be great to do it with like your family but then other than that it's just like I'm good I am not going to go into that <laughs> spiritual realm no thank you so and I, the future always changes yeah. so I feel like that's something that could be cool to see does it always change that's the thing you know the answer that's true so and you could choose not to see the future I can see a benefit to both this is actually kind of hard for me because I've always been a fan of like ghost shows and stuff. Yeah. So I'm always like, ooh. Me not so, so much. It, it, have being, having the ability to see for a thousand years, I immediately think like up to a thousand years, right? I could, I could make myself a millionaire with this, with that gift. So I'm like, would I need anything else? Oh yeah. But at the same time, like imagine like Imagine seeing a hot, like imagine seeing twenty years into the future, and that's as far as you can see, because that's the end of it. That'd be kind of scary, you know. Then again, you can make yourself a billionaire and then enjoy the, enjoy the, uh, like the you, amenities. Yeah, enjoy the amenities for the next twenty years. But I think I would go with actual ghosts, like like being some sort of medium, 
I don't necessarily know if mediums exist for real. Like, that's one thing that I've always had a distrust about people that are, like, mediums or are, like, uh, well, I guess clairvoyance. Like, like, I feel like a lot of them, like, are really good psychologically. They're readers. They're, they're, yeah, like, they read you psychologically to the little things that you say they can decipher stuff about you, so then mm. they use that. I don't know. I've never met a real medium to be, like... Like, I would like to meet one and share the vaguest answers with them and see if they still produce results. Anyway, I do think ghosts are real, though. So having the ability to talk to them, I think, would be really cool because I it, you would get a lot of answers of what comes next when you die. You would get a lot of answers on why they're still around, if that's because they never moved on, or do we just continue to live, or, like, whatever, right? But also... I think it would be cool historically to learn about, like, have a direct line to, line the, past. to the past, not just a book that someone read that might have been manipulated. That's you true. Know? You could find the true answers exactly. to old questions that no one had. Like, to. like the old saying. I don't know if it's an old saying, but it says uh, history is written by the victors, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like history in a way has been shaped by the people who won the wars, who won this, who won that. You know. So, actually hearing it from the source would be super cool, I yeah. think. Like, imagine going back and visiting, like, the grave of George Washington and being like, yo, did you actually have wooden teeth? And then him being like, what? No! Like, what the hell? Yeah. You know? You know the questions that I would ask. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like for me, yeah, it's just Was more of a creepiness. Real? Like, because I don't know, what if uh, Abraham Lincoln is, like, not a nice ghost and you communicate <laughs> with him and he, like, tries to kill you? Like, I would rather do a future thing so I don't have to worry about... Were you actually honest? Oh, that was Noah. That was the doggies. At least they waited till the end to do it this yep. time instead of at the beginning. You got your episode earthquakes. Yeah. Shakes. Yeah. Um, no, but I think it would be cool to learn the history. Like. Yeah, I'd just be more scared than anything. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, future is more me. Yeah, I guess. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. It's a tough one for me. That I, mm. I could see present advantages to seeing a thousand years. Like, imagine knowing that Google was going to be a thing, and you, like, did it first. Not just money-wise, but seeing where the, Boom, like, money. when flying cars happen, when... That's true. Like, when global warming is, you know, like, answering those kind of questions. I think that'd be scary, though, because what if it's, like, 20 years from now? Yeah. You know? Like, ooh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That'd be, that, that'd be scary. I, it's kind of like that question, like, would you rather know how you die or when you die? Like, I don't know. Both of them are crap, but I think I'd rather know how than when. I'd rather know when than how. Yeah. Because imagine if they said by by water, you'd never want to be by water That's the rest fine. of your life. That's fine. I'll live in the middle of the U.S. I'll I'll be stuck yeah, in Nebraska. Yeah, the moment Nebraska, you're in water, you're gonna be terrified every day of your away life. Away from any water. lakes. Away Not... from any lakes. Yeah. Then again, that could mean I choke on water and die, right? Like, yeah, like you never know. True, but so you're constantly terrified. You would instead of knowing, I don't need to be terrified until this day. Yeah, but then you'd be ter that'd be the worst day of your life. Yeah, but your entire life you can live fear free. What if it's like what if it's like a few days from now, you know? Yeah, then you could know you can do whatever you wanted. That's true. And you wouldn't I'd, die. I'd probably I would go swim with sharks, knowing I'm not gonna die. Oh, that's kind of a super you know I never I'm thought saying? about that actually. Yeah. Like, like you could go do some dangerous shit yeah, and you like, know you wouldn't die. Yo, you could do some dangerous yeah. shit. Like imagine you just jump out of a plane without a parachute. Yeah. And you just magically get caught by someone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like, you know what I like what you do. Yeah, I like what you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do the day of, you're like, well, this is the last day. I can say my goodbyes to everyone. Yeah, you are be like, I'll see you never. I'll see you in future life. I always life. hated you. Uh, your breath always stung. You could, you could say goodbye to your loved ones. You, you could find closure. I think. Yeah. Knowing it's going to be, like, a, of course, death, it could be painful, but, like, your entire life, you know when that day is going to be. Everything else will be yeah, free. that's true. Yeah, you can do a lot of stuff. Yeah. So that's the end. Someone someone holds me up at gunpoint. Do it, son. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
<laughs> you won't. You won't. Th- you won't. I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Watch your belly. You still get shot, but you won't die. <laughs> so you'd still be in pain from the gunshot. Uh, anyway, that was. Oh damn, she's wet from all of Rico's slobber. Yeah, they've been playing fighting. Yeah, each other. that's the end of our episode. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Our dogs are saying goodbye. Or more like you haven't paid attention to us for an hour, so pay attention to <laughs> us now. But if you guys liked it, um, you guys can follow us on our socials for more. I'll link to those at the bottom. Um, you can find us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, RSS, TikTok, uh, Instagram. What are you doing? I don't know. That was weird. He just he knocked over the pillows for no reason. <laughs> But anyway, um, as always, give us some sugars. Uh, leave a like. Give us some sugars. I said an S, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought I did it. I thought you didn't hear it. Give us some sugar, plural, unless you want to give us a lot of sugar. Oh, I don't want that to be. Or singular. Jesus. I can't, <laughs> I can't English today. What is you going can't English on? Today. <laughs> oh, I should just say that. Okay, don't, don't, don't forget to be a little salty. <laughs>